tell me a story about a time that you know that you saw something, but you don't ever tell this story because you know that no one would ever believe you. All right, so about a year ago, there was this story on Reddit going viral about a kid who found his father's journals from when he was a doctor in Antarctica and what he had discovered there. Long story short, his dad finds out when he's a doctor there that there's these large arachnids that are killing the U.S. soldiers while he's on tour there. It's something that the entire base was covering up and when he asked any questions, they basically ended up just shipping him out. So I posted my video about a year or so ago now and on YouTube, all of a sudden it picked up steam again and went viral again. So I found myself reading the comment section and one of the comments was absolutely mind blowing. Story goes like this. In 2002, a friend of mine told me of an encounter that terrified him as a child all the way up to adulthood. And you all know the drill. All my content is for entertainment purposes only and may or may not be true. I just provide the stories and information, let y'all decide. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I post. And I will have some more Navigator Across the Ice Balls coming up. I got an awesome cryptid story as well, so stay tuned. He said he was in his room around age nine and he was playing with army men and marbles when he saw the head of an arachnid type creature appear to him. This creature apparently came from inside of the wall. He said right when he was about to scream, it communicated to him in his head that it wouldn't hurt him. He told me it had the face of a human female, just slightly different. He asked for her to reveal herself and she said she was a spider-like creature and didn't want to scare him. She met with him over the next few days and finally came out of the wall fully when she knew he was completely comfortable with her. He told me they were communicating telepathically, but at the time, he really didn't understand that's actually what was happening. He said he just knew they heard each other's thoughts. He asked her was she there to take him away because he was adopted, and she said no, that he was actually someone that was related to her in her reality of existence, and she wanted to peek in on his new essence of being. She said she can cloak herself normally, but being overwhelmed with emotions of seeing him, she wasn't able to do so for some reason. She told him there are universal laws and boundaries she wasn't supposed to cross, but she couldn't help it. She had to find him. And just like she appeared, she was gone. He said he walked over to the wall and it was solid as a rock. He tried to explain this to his new family and they ended up putting him in therapy and on medication. So he never brought it up again until the very moment he shared it with me. I laughed him off at the time. He had tears in his eyes. So I just told him it was okay and I believed he saw her. We've never spoken about it again to this day. The following is another commenter's account on the same video. I have a friend who used to work with a military type company. I am intentionally leaving the name out for privacy. He told me he was 17 stories under the Denver Federal Airport in the 1980s and he only knew this because he could tell by how long and at what speed the elevator was traveling at. And that was his guess at about how deep he went down because he was blindfolded and escorted by two fully armed military guards. He said he was taken down a long hall and put into a room and after about 30 minutes, the guards came and got him and took him to this big office. He told me some rather large overweight man proceeds to take out this large book from this massive desk in his office. He then starts unfolding this massive book, which then turns into a huge map of the United States showing high speed rail systems, underground power stations, underground military bases, and different zones of control throughout the world. They are having a conversation about power substations when my friend asks him about what is their need for so much power and substations. The fat man then proceeds to ask him if he was in the military, at which time he says he was only a civilian with a top secret clearance, not military. The fat man proceeded to panic, jumps up on top of the map spread out on the table attempting to hide what was on there and then presses a button on his desk. Under the Atlantic he said Ocean, the two large the armed guards beyond. came running in. He told me most people had no idea that hundreds of underground guys are spread now. all over the place. He said they grabbed him, put a hood over his head, and proceeded to carry him off and put him back on the elevator, telling him to never return. He said he was aware over his working with this company that high-speed rails traveled all over, including ones that actually went and all connected with high-speed rails, where the trains actually levitate magnetically so they travel with almost no sound. I would not at all be shocked at anything they are hiding way down there. Think about it. 160-some countries all on a peace treaty since 1959, yet they fight wars everywhere else. Next story about Antarctica gets even crazier. I worked with a person that told me this story 12 years ago. This person had a child who worked for the Air Force. 
They drove large trucks and hauled equipment for years. They were then sent to Antarctica to drive large snowcats to transport equipment and supplies to various outposts through the region back in the early 2000s. This person was sent on a transport to a location they had never been and was always regarded as off limits. As they finally made it to this area, they saw a large structure out in the distance on the horizon. Because it stretched the entirety of the horizon, they also began to notice something different about the sky. The sky seemed to look like glass. It didn't seem right to this person. It was as if there was something in the sky, but couldn't quite make it out. As they got closer to the structure, it just grew larger and larger, and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. It was a large black building with no windows. It looked to be a modern building that you would see in New York or another large city. As this person finally approached the delivery area, they said they could not see the ends of the building and that it seemed to stretch on forever. They also noticed that the sky, the sky shimmered like glass when reflecting light. They said they felt as if they were at the end of something, almost felt like there was a wall behind the building and that the building was built into this wall. It made no sense to them and it felt wrong as that they shouldn't be there. This person wanted to leave as soon as possible, so they finished the supply drop, which were large nondescript cargo type containers. They have no idea what was in the containers, nor did they see anything that was alien or the like. The building itself felt ominous and bad, and that they had an extremely bad feeling when there. None of it seemed possible. The sky, the building, and even the individuals in the receiving base seemed different, not normal, such as the military or the scientific type. This person would only describe the people there as just giving off a weird vibe, as if they were bad or out of place. This individual made it back to their home base and immediately asked for a transfer to another area where they know they would only do local runs and not the long hauls until their deployment was over. This person never saw anything out of the ordinary again while finishing their deployment there. They did say they would hear people talking about odd things happening around there. They never specified as to what the odd stuff was and refused to even repeat it or talk about it again. I trust this person who I worked with, and they would never make up such a story for, to me for any reason. They were a hardworking laborer type person whom I knew for years before they ever told me this and asked me to never give out their information. This is the last comment I'm going to read from this post. My grandfather was in World War II. He was a Merrill Marauder for intelligence and reconnaissance. He was around the age of 73 when he told me that after the war back on the Indian reservation, alcohol was illegal to the Indians. So they had bootleggers close to the reservation borders. He and several friends would case up and before they headed back to the Indian reservations, they would drink and visit, holler around and enjoy getting drunk. It was a thing on the weekends until they seen a few massive spiders. I can't share directly what took place, but he said it could be from the bombing range that Ellsworth Air Force conducted studies at right next to the Indian reservation in South Dakota. He also believed it could be the chemicals that caused the insects to grow so massive. We rode horses by the Badland Wall before. He asked me if I seen the huge holes on the sandstone domes. I said yes. That's when he told me don't ever go out to the Badlands, not alone, not ever, or at night. He only told me about the spiders, not the snakes or the people with no eyes that would scream and run around in the dark. There are things we don't understand. We shouldn't try. We have a job as humans. That's to be human and be good at it to be happy, healthy, and just leave shit alone. Also, I've been dabbling with the idea of starting a second channel and being a YouTube commentator, meaning I'm gonna cover things like the Mr. Beast stuff, the Dr. Disrespect stuff. I'm gonna be kind of covering a little bit of everything. I'm thinking about either integrating it in my channel or starting a second channel because that stuff is hot right now, it's popping, and I think it's a good idea to try and cover it. And it piques my interest. I, I follow all of it and it's something that I like. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed those stories from some of my followers. There's nothing more that I like than hearing firsthand accounts. People being able to share without having to share their identity. It gives people a place to share their stories without feeling embarrassed or scrutinized. So I thought these stories were awesome. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and maybe I'll start doing a little bit more of these. Stay in love, stay in the light, be kind to others. I am out.